Hey again. So in this uh, video, we're going to begin the process of our add stock functionality. Now uh, it's quite complicated because we are going to be assigning new stock items to categories and also we're going to be uploading images as well. So there's a fair amount going on. Uh, it'll probably take, I would guess, probably three videos. So I apologize for the length of it, but I want to be able to explain things as I go. Right, so to, as an overview, you can see the layout. Basically, we'll have three pages. The first will with add stock. That will, we, will, we will work on that today. That will contain our form, where we enter all the information and choose the images to upload. Uh, we'll post that information to our confirm page, where the user has the ability to confirm or go back. Uh, that is the page that will actually upload the image as well. And then we will go on to enter stock if they confirm it and that enters the information into the database and also clears our session. And we will be using sessions so that if our user chooses to go back from the confirm page to the add stock page, there'll be something there for them to see already filled out in the form. So in today's video, we're just going to do the add stock page and get that all set up. So in Notepad, just go ahead and create a new page and save it. A PHP file called add stock. All right. And um, we have to do the usual stuff at the start here. Uh, we're going to need to start our session. And we're also going to need to do the standard um, checking to see if someone is actually logged in. So that's checking against our admin session. So you can, can just copy and paste this from your previous page, previous admin pages. Um, so that's saying if the session's not set, we want to direct them um, somewhere else. So we're going to send them to the index page. Actually, we'll just send them right out to the index page. We don't need to send them anywhere else. All right, so that's if they're not logged in, they're not welcome. Um, and then come down here and just close that off. Okay. Now, uh, first thing that's going to happen is we want to check and see, I guess, um, what's the best way of thinking about this? Actually, now let's start with the, the form. So let's come down here. We'll return back there later. Uh, the first thing is this needs to sit inside our main content class because that's how the site has been laid out. All right. And I'm going to uh, go ahead and put a I suppose we start with a link just so that people can get back to the um, admin page just in case they decide they don't want to go through with this one. So let's go back to admin there. So that's just a, a courtesy for a user if they decide that they, they click on add stock in their admin panel and then go, oh no, I didn't want to do that. At least we've got a link so they don't have to click on back in the browser. Now, uh, have a header. Something like that, and that shouldn't appear too big because remember the style sheet has has adapted the appearance of the h1 tag. So our next thing is our form. Now the method with which we are going to be sending stuff is post. Uh, the action, that in other words, the page it's going to be sending it to, and remember we're using this one page method, so it's going to index.php, but the page we're going to be loading is confirm add stock because. Later on, we might be going confirm edit stock and confirm delete. So we'll go for a big, long, complicated name. And the last thing as well we need to put in here is the encoding type or ink type there. And that's going to be equal to multi-part slash form hyphen data. Now that's the part that's going to enable us to upload images. That means let's close the form down below. So within that form, we're going to have a few things that need to appear there. We're going to have the, uh, I guess, the stock item name. So I'm just going to have these in paragraph tags, like so. Um, what else are we going to have in here? The, the thumbnail image. So notice I'm just putting in the structure first, and then I'll go through and add the um, the form items. Uh, we have the category that it belongs to. Uh, I'm trying to think what other information we had for this. Oh, the price. Price is fairly important. Uh, the price, which I'll put a, I'll actually put a dollar sign there so the users know not to put a dollar sign in that form. 
and the top line that was just a random thing I put in I'm not sure why I did it's like a little catchphrase for each item and then the description of the item now actually the description is going to be a text area as well so that'll be slightly different okay and then the last thing we need to have is an, a button so I'll just go input and what do I have here that's a type equals submit uh, what else do we want to have a name and the value which is what text will appear on the on the button itself right so then just returning back now to the stock item we're going to have a input field here and it's going to be a text box and it will have a name of I'm going to call it name because that will match quite nicely what is in the in the database now, actually to save me having to redo this I'm just going to copy that so thumbnail image the name of that field is going to be thumbnail because that is what that field is called in our database category is slightly different so I'll leave that for the time being price is price and then top line is also going to be a text field now the description is actually going to be a text area because we want them to be able to have as much uh, space as possible so I'll give that a name of description but with the text area I think I'm going to give that one ooh, I'll make it 60 columns and ooh, five rows again you can totally play around with this stuff until you're happy with it oh why have I got speech marks there close that text area and then uh, because text areas don't self close I then need to go slash text area all right so hopefully that works all right um, let's just test that and see so if I return to my browser here page equals add stock and what have I done oh line six I've got my semicolon way up there don't forget about those okay so you can see the form is coming together the formatting yes terrible feel free to uh, improve on this in fact please improve on this now the category is going to be a bit of an issue though because we want to have a drop down menu there which has all the categories which you can already see across the top here uh, we want to display those so we can choose them so for the category what we're going to do here is we're actually going to go ahead and select all the categories um, now I'm just going to clear a few lines here what I want to have first of all uh, using the select tag and I'm going to give this a name so select tag will allow us to have a drop down menu where we can select one thing uh, the name of it is actually going to be category ID because that is the name of the data in our database and I'll just show you what I mean you can see category ID here the item belongs to an ID of a category with an ID of one or three or one um, so it makes sense to have our naming conventions match that and anyway uh, what we're going to need to do then is we're going to need to go and I guess select all that stuff so let's go ahead and insert some PHP and we're going to need to go and select it all so I'm going to create a variable called cat list underscore SQL and this is going to say select everything from the category table then we're going to run that with the MySQL I query I think dollar sign DB connect is our connection string and then cat list underscore SQL is the name of the variable that contains our query and finally let's put that into an associative array my SQLI make sure I spell that one right and the stuff that we're organizing is the cat list query okay so there's our three steps as always um, and then we're going to need to display them all so let's say we'll do a do while loop um, while and the thing that is true is that last line of those three so I'll just paste that in there so as long as there's something to put into our associative array continue to do everything in this do while loop and the thing we want to do here is we're going to put in an option uh, and that's an HTML tag so I'll just break out of the PHP 
and then re-enter it down there. And in that space there, which is no longer PHP, I'm actually going to put in an option tag in HTML and say that the value of this option is going to be equal to put some speech marks there, something. And then we close the option tag like so. Somewhere around here, there we go. And what we need to do is we need to dynamically display the ID, or the, ca the category ID here, and in here, the category name. So open up some PHP, we are gonna echo from the cat list record set, the category ID. And then because I'm so lazy, I'll just copy that. In here, in between the option tags, we're going to display the name of the category. So I'll save that and run that page again. And I've made a mistake down there. What a surprise. Ah, because you can see we started our PHP there on our loop and I never closed it down. Very lazy. Sorry about that. Okay, so there we go. And you can see we've now got our drop down right there. And I'm getting some random text field appearing. We'll work on that in a second. So anyway, we've got our uh, category ID displaying our select. Um, so when the select finishes, we should close that off as well. So hopefully that takes care of that. There we go. So there's our select tag. And so when we select one of those, we're selecting them by name, which is obviously much easier for a user. But when we submit this form, that is actually going to send the ID of this thing that we've chosen. So that's because the value of wherever it is, the value of each item has been set to the ID, not the name. Okay, so we have this form set up now and it all seems to be ready to go. So in our next video we're going to look at creating the confirmation page and that sort of functionality. Um, oh actually before I forget the thumbnail didn't actually do thumbnails completely wrong. What was I thinking? Um, See so the input type being text, that's ridiculous. That should be the file, because we actually want that to be something that we select. And the name of it, I'm actually, because I'm gonna be blatantly using um, the, what I'm trying to think here, I'm blatantly gonna be using the code from uh, the W3Schools website. I'm actually just gonna stick with their naming convention. So I'm just gonna say file to upload, and I'm gonna give that an ID of file to upload. So I'm just completely following them and what they've done and I'm just going to adapt it very slightly on our confirmation page. So now again if I refresh this now you can see the thumbnail image enables me to actually choose a file. So I can go choose a, choose a picture and it selects it. Great. Okay, so sorry about that, it got a bit messy. But that's the plan of attack. So we now have the thumbnail image is going to be a file, Let's type file, the name file to upload, and the category, which is a very special type here, is where we're assigning this item to a particular category that exists in our database. We need to select all those categories, display them in a loop, and what we're doing here is we're inside a select tag in HTML, and each item appears as an option, enabling us to select it. Anyway, that's all for now, and next time we'll do the confirmation.